All right, this BMW wagon is about to get the Gary Dean treatment. It's the only treatment we know. So it was brought in for prep for sale detail. And that's exactly what's gonna happen. But first, hey guys, Gary Dean, detailjuice.com. I'm about to start on this BMW and uh, we'll see where we go from here. So this thing is gonna get some love. It's a prep for sale detail. He's trying to sell it. He's gonna list it on one of the sites that all the BMW craziness happens on. So he wants to make sure it's done right. And he wants to move the car and get as much, as much money for it as he can. All right, so as you can see, it's got a great stance. It's been lowered slightly, still got a nice bit of suspension travel the offset is really nice looks great i love it uh traditionally these uh side markers uh haze up real bad they get oxidized by the sun so i'll get those cleaned up not a whole lot we can do with the headlights because most of that's inside but it's got some spots and stuff around the outside uh that i'm hoping to be able to get off with just the wash so we're gonna start with that uh and then we'll go from there i did recommend that he paint these brake calipers he uh <laughs> he wanted me to do it but i just i just don't have time and it's a lot of work and so i had to pass on that one but anyway looks good overall it's a great looking car um, like I said, got those spots on the hood I'm a little bit concerned about, but not real concerned. We're going to do an all-in-one polish with uh, Universal All-in-One with this thing. And that's, oh, it's a Mazda key. And that's literally all we're going to do with the outside. Come on. Okay. That's the right button. So, on the interior, we're going to go ahead and just clean it out nothing fancy doesn't look bad it's actually in really good shape just got to get all this dirt and grime and nastiness out of here but other than that it's fine so complete interior and uh all in one polish on the outside i'll get all these jams nice and cleaned out That's it guys, gonna go ahead and get the outside washed and clayed and then uh, I'll get the interior done while that's drying and then I'll pull it in the garage and we'll get to polishing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave you for now and we, we'll be back whenever we've uh, gotten rolling. All right, so I got rolling on this thing and all I've done, I'm just doing a traditional wash right now. I'm testing out a couple of different things, but um, so I just knocked the bulk of the contamination off, but uh, this is a prep for sale detail. And I have a certain regimen of things that I do every time for prep for sale to help the customer get maximum dollar out of their, uh, their cars. And one of the things that's very important, especially on these enthusiast kind of um, sales if you will i mean this guy is trying to target the guy who wants this car lowered looking great uh this wagon i mean this is this is a certain type of buyer he's looking for to get max dollar out of it and those people are absolutely going to pop the hood and look around so i need to be able to wipe down all of that i need to get all of the the top junk off of this motor i also need to get all of this debris out of uh, the engine cowl in this area you see all that there is nasty it's all over here and that's one of the major things somebody's going to look at when they're looking at this car they're going to pop the hood and say well this thing looks great on the outside but maybe you've neglected the engine uh so you want to just get it all cleaned up so that it looks like it's not been run hard even if you beat the piss out of this thing it's going to look like he never did whenever i'm done so uh, i'm going to go ahead and get on that and we'll be back when i'm done with uh, a little more 
All right, I use the trusty, rigid, portable four gallon vacuum. That's the vacuum I recommend to everybody who's trying to detail. It's portable, it's powerful, it's fantastic. They last forever. It literally has a lifetime warranty. Um, that one right there is probably eight years old. Uh, and I keep a brand new one on the shelf at all times. Um, I am using deionized water to rinse everything down. And uh, this right here, all Florida water, they're owned by Culligan now, uh, but that's the 800 number you can get service from at allfloridawater.com. You're gonna talk to those people and tell them that Gary Dean sent you if you're interested in you're, you're in the uh, if you're in Florida. I think they service the entire state. So, um, and I'm just using the uh, Karcher Cube, 1700 psi. I don't believe that it's anywhere near that, but I've adapted it with the Uberflex hose, best option. Uh, and then I've got just a little hand wand there um, with a quarter inch tip. That's the 40 degree tip. And then I'm using just a uh, cheapy foam cannon from Amazon and that is the uh, Recon Rescue Soap which is an awesome awesome soap for just general purpose anything you want to do with it uh, it is not as fantastic for maintenance as my other soaps like uh, Universal Shampoo or the Perfect Soap but it is really good for pretty much anything you'd want to do with it it's it's fine for maintenance it's just a little bit better cleaning power which means potentially like on paper it might strip more than you know a general maintenance soap would uh, but it it works really well and you'd be hard pressed to to notice it it just has um i don't know i'm just trying to compare it uh verbally uh, to universal shampoo and the perfect soap the di major difference is you get more you've got a cheaper cleaning agent basically in there. It's a cheaper cleaning agent. It doesn't clean as well without stripping as the other soaps do, but it will definitely uh, help you to maintain your protection. It just won't last as long using that soap as it will with uh, the higher end soaps in my lineup. That's all. It's a great soap. Uh, I use it well, I don't do traditional washes all the time, but when I do traditional washes, I have no problem using that soap, especially on boats and RVs where I'm going to be polishing anyway. It's a great all-purpose soap. Um, so I got, I used the rigid to clean out all of this nasty crap from the engine bay. Now I'm actually, I'm just going to foam the engine. It doesn't look to be any electronics on top. I'm just going to hit it real quick with some soap and then indirectly wash it okay everybody likes to see this part i'm gonna go ahead and show you me foaming this thing if i can get a grip on it just a quick foam gotta turn my foam ratio up maybe there we go. Now she's foaming. All right, just gonna get a little foam in there. Let it soak for a second. And then uh, I'm gonna take just my little kit. I'm just gonna take a, uh, a brush, just like this, my wheel brush. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go in here and just get the tops. Knock the bulk off the tops. This channel here. You know, we're not doing a full-on engine bay detail. We're just making the top surfaces look better. That's all we're trying to do, is make it look better. Get all the debris we can just off the top. And then after I'm done with all that, I'm just going to rinse it down. Lightly, indirect pressure. And uh, we'll be back for that. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub her down. And we'll be back for the rinse. Okay, so now I'm gonna detach this foam gun, put the nozzle back on, and then uh, give it a light spray. I've scrubbed everything down. Here we go. Indirect pressure. You don't wanna go too hardcore. You just kinda wanna blow it all off.
We're just looking at trying to get all the tops clean so that it looks good. And that's it. I did uh, scrub down the underside of the hood too. All right, and that's it. So now, all that's left to do is basically, while I'm working on the rest of the car, that's gonna dry a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit it with some uh, universal dressing, and then, Call it a day. So basically, after it dries on its own a little bit, and uh, I'm probably, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll start the car and let the heat dry it a little bit while I'm working on the rest of the car. Um, and there's always a, a, a way, a method to my madness. So as I'm detailing a vehicle, I wanna do things first that will aid me in the process later, if that makes sense. So me getting done with the detail on the engine bay now keeps all the extra debris and stuff from coming back on the car later on. So for example, I just hit it with the water and I pushed it all up this way. So now you've got all kinds of debris all over the exterior of the car. Now, in order not to have that, you do the engine bay first and then you'll shut the hood and come back to it later. So now I don't have to push all that out later on. And so the next step, so I, I will, if I'm doing an engine bay, I'll always do that first. Um, and then the next step now is to go ahead and wash and decontaminate the paint. So I'm gonna wash it uh, with the uh, Recon Rescue soap, which uh, if you haven't seen that, it is uh, incredible value. Uh, this bottle's empty, but this is it. This is what the uh, label looks like on the soap that I'm using. It smells like papaya. It dilutes at one ounce per gallon. Uh, and I put two ounces in that 32 ounce reservoir and filled it up with water. So it foams really nice as well. Um, so I'm going to wash it with that with a uh, microfiber wash mitt, which you can see I keep in this bag out of the way of flying de debris uh, but the bag is still kind of open there's a hole in the bottom where it can drain out uh, and just the majority well any flying debris isn't gonna be able to get to it and it can dry because it's open air so that's how I store my wash media just so you know um, I'm gonna wash it with that soap I'm gonna clay bar it with universal clean and prep as the lube diluted one part product to seven parts water. So uh, one to seven. Um, and that's gonna help any ferrous metal particles and uh, debris that's stuck in the clear. It's gonna help break that down and allow the clay to do a more efficient job pulling it out. So that's the plan for that. And then after that, obviously it's gonna be nice and dry when I uh, wipe every panel down uh, and the universal cleaner prep is breaking down any wax or sealant that's on there now. So it's doing multiple things. It's breaking down any wax or sealant. It's helping the ferrous metal particles and you know any of the iron deposit and, and all that kind of stuff to break up and the clay is removing all the other contaminants as well as the ferrous metal particles. Uh, and then we are still getting that primer left behind which we don't necessarily need because the next step is universal all in one. Where am I, where's my brain at today? So we'll keep you going with the steps, but the next step is to wash and decon this thing. And so we'll bring you back when I've got more done. All right, one more step, almost down. I uh, went ahead and uh, started the engine so the engine bay can dry a little bit. So the heat is gonna help it to dry. Um, and then while that's happening, I went ahead and just sprayed the, uh, snow foam on the car uh, I don't know that this does a whole lot I have always been a fan of not wasting soap I feel like this step is a waste it looks cool though and literally everybody walking down the street uh, looks over and and like so three people have been walking by since I did this and uh, 
two of the three asked what I was doing. So it's a great way to get attention. So if you're a mobile detailer and you want to get some attention and you don't want to have to pay for it or uh, even ask for it, snow foam is going to get that attention for you because it's, it's something not everybody sees every day. Um, that's the cool part about it. I'm just disconnecting this because it fell over and was leaking out. So uh, it's not something everybody sees every day and they are interested in it because it looks cool. Uh, the cool part about this soap is it smells like papaya and it's, we put a lot of fragrance in it for this purpose where people walking by or driving by or in a parking lot or whatever, they're going to see this happening. They're going to be like, wow, that's cool. And then they're going to smell it. They're going to get the good smells. So then they're going to get curious. And uh, the whole purpose for snow foam, in my opinion, is the wow factor. To get someone's attention, not necessarily to add more lube, because I don't care about that. The soap is lu lubricious enough. Lubricious? Is that a word? Lubricious? Um, anyway, so that's what's happening now is we just wasted a little bit of soap got a little bit of attention for it and so now we go into the wash and that's it uh, I'm not gonna do anything fancy for the wash I'm gonna be polishing this thing so I'm legit going to dip that uh, wash media in the bucket and just wash several panels at a time then I'm gonna rinse it and then right after that we'll get to rolling on the decon process so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about that and to talk to you about snow foam and what the biggest benefit to it is in my opinion so more work to go all right here's the moment of truth so i have washed this whole thing you see how flat the paint is as far as not having any kind of protection on it at all um this is my ultra fine grade japanese clay bar uh, I import these from Japan because when I found these about 12 years ago, they were amazing and I get them from the same source every single time I order them directly from Japan where clay bar was originally invented. So uh, back in the 1992 era. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and sit that there. I have Universal Clean and Prep already made up in this pump sprayer at one part product to seven parts water and so I'm just gonna mist it all on the surface just like you see go ahead and be liberal and you see all these spots I'm hoping a lot of that will go away so we're gonna go ahead and just saturate a couple of panels and you want to make sure you got your your uh, rinse bucket which i have there uh, for your clay but look how much contamination this is going to pull off here um, even washing it i could feel that it was really nasty um, but using universal clean and prep as a clay bar lubricant uh, works awesome with overspray it removes overspray really easily oh yeah it's taking that junk off you can see even in the lubrication that's there uh, that it's pulling off all kinds of crap so i'm going to show you the clay now you can't really see it because of the cleaner is leaving it all up in here so the cool part about it is all you got to do is just wash off the excess oh, i should probably move that wash media out of there but i'll do that in a second but i'm removing all kinds of contamination but it's not contaminating the clay bar which is the coolest part uh, because of the universal clean and prep breaking it down so well and let me show you see these spots i was worried those weren't going to come out very easily look at this clay is taking them right off with the universal cleaning prep done deal it's awesome so that's all that needs to be done and then uh i'll hose it down get all the universal cleaning prep off of it and uh and then it'll be ready for polish as soon as it's dry but that's it works awesome you don't need a dedicated iron remover ever especially when you use my clay and universal clean and prep we have engineered these products to work just like if not better in my opinion because i've tried all the iron removers on the market this setup works better than all of them in every test that I've done. So 
that's where we're at. All right, I'm gonna keep on keeping on. We'll get you back uh, over here. You see all the debris on there now? It's just not sticking to the clay, which is the coolest part. All right, I'm gonna get that wash media rinsed out and put back where it goes and then get this knocked out. All right, so <clears throat> a couple things. I am at the point where I have cleaned, decontaminated. I mean, this paint is super smooth, not a contaminant to be found. Wheels, super clean, barrels, immaculate. Um, you can see I've still got some stuff from the Universal Clean and Prep. It's the primer that gets left behind. That's all right, I'm polishing this thing, doesn't matter. Um, so I've got everything ready to go. I'm gonna let it dry. And the reason I do the outside first, all my prep, especially if I'm doing a traditional wash, and even if I'm doing a rinseless, because you get residual water and all the cracks and crevices and that kind of thing. So what I like to do when I'm doing my prep for sale details is like I mentioned earlier, I'll get the engine bay all cleaned and dialed in pretty much first. Um, there's a next step that I will be taking, but not yet. So I'll get uh, the engine bay cleaned up, just the tops and that kind of thing. I'll shut the hood and then I'll go about cleaning and decontaminating the paint and the wheels, get the exterior all looking fantastic. While the outside is drying, I will do the interior. That saves me just a little bit of time so I don't have to worry about drying the outside. By the time the exterior is, uh, or by the time I'm done with the interior, the exterior is gonna be completely dry, but beyond that, uh, you can wipe down anything that's left. So now that everything's prepped and ready to go, for the polishing process, while I'll let it dry, I'm gonna go ahead and get the interior knocked out. Um, and again, this black interior isn't real bad. I'm gonna clean everything on the inside with Universal Clean and Prep. Looks like there's some dog hair and that kind of thing. I'm going to get everything vacuumed really well, then clean everything with Universal Clean and Prep, wipe everything down with Infinite Use Detail Juice 1, and then uh, I will hit the door jams and then shut her down, and I'll go about the polishing process. And then after that, we'll do the trim out, and uh, we'll be done with that. So you saw what the interior looks like. I'm going to go ahead and knock that out now, and then after that, we'll pull it in the garage and get started with the polishing. All right, so I got the engine bay all straight. It's all dry. Um, I'm tossing around. Do I use transform dressing or do I use universal dressing from the one system? Now, the, dif the difference is quite considerable. Um, the universal dressing will last longer and, and dilutes the same ways. So it is a little bit glossier at times um, and it is more weather resistant for sure than transform dressing. The transform dressing lays a little bit easier, a little bit more even, uh, and doesn't require you to go back over it and just make sure that it's even. Uh, like on tires, sometimes you'll have to just go give a, a quick wipe just to make sure it's even. But like I said, it'll last longer, so you're getting more polymers and that kind of stuff on the surface uh, than with the transform dressing. So I'm tossing around what to use here. Um, to set it and forget it, transform dressing is a little easier. If you want it to last a little longer and look good for longer, then the universal dressing is what you would use. Uh, like I said, both of them dilute the same ways. But now that I've got everything pretty much good, the interior is good, the jams are wiped out, um, the paint is clean and decontaminated, the engine bay is clean and dry, and so, Couple things for your prep for, de for sale details that a lot of people seem to overlook. First thing is you always wanna remove that license plate. When you sell the vehicle, that, well, when, when the customer, in this case, sells the vehicle, uh, he's gonna pull his plate off for the new owner to take possession of the car. And if you pull that plate off, BMW, I believe Mercedes as well, have this extra black panel, and I'll show you uh, that real quick. They have this thing that is the actual mount for the license plate. And so that goes on there first with a couple of screws. And so I like to take the plate off and that off so that I can clean back there. 
really well. I'll also polish back there, have not done any polishing. So that's one thing you gotta do on your prep for sales. It's very important. Um, if you neglect that, they're gonna start think, the potential customer is gonna start thinking, well, what else did he forget? And so then they'll dig harder in some situations. So this is just, you know, a way for you to remove something that you're gonna have to remove anyway and clean behind before the potential buyer sees it. The other thing is you always wanna clean out I do this on pretty much every detail. I'll clean out the uh, the fuel filler cap area. I like to clean all of this out so it looks really nice uh, and that kind of thing. So that's important. Uh, door jams obviously are very important. This vehicle looks great inside now. Uh, again, I didn't do anything super fancy. Just uh, clean the leather, condition the leather with Infinite Use Detail Juice 1 with Triple Tech, actually, I use that one. Um, I cleaned the floor mats, vacuumed everything out. I did a few spot treatments on the carpet, nothing bad. The headliner was in great shape, so I didn't do a ton with that. Um, console area was kind of dirty. It's all clean now, had some dust and that kind of thing. Door panels were all right, but uh, the wheels are clean. So I guess, um, I'm going to go ahead and use universal dressing. I actually have some mixed up right here. I'm going to go ahead and use universal dressing because I want it to last a little bit longer. Um, so I'll hit the engine bay. Let's see. With universal dressing. What I like to do with this is I like to get all the black pieces. All the black plastic. It looks awesome when you've gotten some of this stuff all over it mmm smells good too so I just go in here and I just douse it just spray it on everything and then I will let it do its thing while I am polishing I am going to I get it all in all the hoses this will protect all your hoses from the heat it'll actually disguise some of the dirt too which is definitely a plus so i'm gonna go ahead and do this and i'll bring you back right before i shut the hood and pull it inside all right one one step closer i, went, I got this uh engine bay all sprayed down with universal dressing and so i'm gonna let that do its thing and soak in it has a penetrant in it which will soak in the rubber and the plastic and the wire casings and all that stuff and it will soak in there you get uva and uvb resistance for sure but in this case it doesn't really matter what you want is heat resistance um, and that will definitely provide that so i'm going to let it go ahead and soak in while i'm working on the polishing and then i'll go back and i'll wipe it all in whenever I'm done. Uh, I did go ahead and just spray some on the tires. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that in and I'm gonna start getting the polishing done. I wanted to make sure I don't have to spray any more uh, trim type treatment products on anything uh, so that I don't have any overspray to contend with. So uh, now it's time to pull it in here and get started with the polishing again all i'm going to do is a quick all-in-one polish oh it's not that uh somewhere i have universal all-in-one and uh that's the product i'll be using today on this uh bmw to remove all that nastiness should be none of that haze when i'm done it's not going to be perfect we're not looking for perfection we're looking to enhance the gloss, remove that mar micro marring crap that's all over this thing, and uh, basically freshen it up, make it look good for sale. And that's what we're gonna do. So time to pull it inside and get to polishing. Okay, I'm in here polishing this thing. Uh, just got rolling with the uh, Harbor Freight DA and an orange pad. Just did one little test section. Um, I was testing the uh, new compound and final polish but what I'm working on is just I just polished this section just three quick passes um, show you what it looks like before this is before really hazy 
really really marred up and nasty and you can see as we get close to the uh, line here how different it looks where I polished so no more haze definitely got some issues with the paint got some scratches BMW paint is traditionally very hard so it takes something really aggressive to really bite down and get rid of all that crap but look here's the difference just with the all-in-one really hazy and nasty but really nice and slick it got all the haze and the lighter swirls are gone yuck and bam smack yo mama it looks so good um you know bottom line is it's just an all-in-one but does a great job makes quick work of not very quick work <laughs> all right i'm over here polishing and uh before i hit this i want to show you guys what it looks like before it's all hazy it's all oxidized all right i'm going to polish it up just with I'm using the 2021 updated version of Universal All-in-One. This is a two ounce bottle. So I'm just basically trying to see how much it takes to do a solid quality uh, all-in-one polish on a, basically a four door station wagon. So just this would be what I would consider an average size car. So I'm trying to see how much polish it takes to use it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to take less than one ounce. This is two ounces. And uh, I'm going to get that polished, and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. All right, there you go. It's beautiful again. No more oxidation. Crystal clear lens. And that's what you want. All right, I'm going to keep on polishing this bad boy. All right guys, so I finally got this BMW finished. It took a little longer than I anticipated because I did a few extra things that I didn't necessarily charge the guy for, nor did I talk to him about. But when I got the car, it really needed to be done. And that's how I roll. I add value wherever I can because I charge what I need to get the job done properly. And uh, that is what it is. I'm not the cheapest guy around, that is for sure. I don't claim to be, I'm not trying to be, but I am trying to be the best. And that's how I roll. My clients think that, and that's what I want them to feel. Because obviously, I want to do the job because I'm passionate about it, but I also like making people happy. So with this BMW, it's looking right. It looks awesome. Uh, this right here is the bottle. Uh, it's a two-ounce bottle of Universal All-in-One that I used to try to see how much product I was going to use on the car. I knew that one ounce was probably going to do it, but I wasn't sure and I didn't want to not have enough in the bottle to show me exactly where I was with the detail. I got done with this car with right at three quarters of an ounce of product. So check this out. Um, here's the bottle. You can probably see right there is the line between where my finger is. Um, let me turn you around. Okay. So. You can see right there is where it's at. So right there would be half. So it's about three quarters of an ounce from here to here. So there's about an ounce and a quarter left, but that is where we're at. So pretty awesome. Less than an ounce of product to polish this entire BMW with the Harbor Freight DA and the orange buff and shine pad. Um, I use one pad for the whole car generally, but I'll wash it about four to five times through the car. So I take with me a bunch of pads. So this is my little pad container right here, uh, pads, applicators, and that kind of thing. Um, and then obviously that's my polishing bag. It's got my rotaries and all kinds of cool stuff in there. But, uh, mainly what I use is this Harbor Freight, uh, dual action polisher. So I will wash my pads about four to five times during the course of a full detail here and um, full detail. Uh, I mean, a one step polish. And uh, that seems to put me in a really good spot. Um, that way I know 
I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to like explain to you why I do it that way. I, I don't know. I mean, so I can carry less things. I don't know. I use one or two pads at a time until they're spent or fall apart. And then I throw them away and, and grab a new one. That pad is actually in great shape. I've done, I think I did a finishing polish with that on a boat and I've done three cars with that. This is the third car I completed with that pad and it still looks great. Lots of life left in that. I could probably get three more full all-in-ones out of that same pad. So pretty excited about that, but that's how I do it. I just, I do, uh, you know, three or four panels and then I'll wash it out and then I'll spin it dry on the machine and then I'll put it back on there uh, and then keep going around the car. So I'm all done. I am going to wipe this thing down real quick with uh, infinite use detail juice, just the regular stuff. I want to remove the streaks from the windows and just make sure there's no streaks or uh, any polishing residue in any of the cracks and crevices, which there shouldn't be. Uh, but I like to do a, just a final wipe down. Um, and I'm not trying to add protection per se. I'm just trying to get rid of all any and all streaks and uh, inconsistencies with the detail. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down. I'll pull it outside and then we'll talk about um the full detail that i did today so i'm gonna get to work all right guys this 2012 bmw 328i would it be officially called a wagon wagon <laughs> sorry the uh the owner's here to pick it up and i'm just shooting the uh the end of the video so uh the process as you saw throughout the whole video uh is basically i washed uh, with a traditional wash and then I uh, used the Recon Rescue soap uh, Which is pretty awesome. I foamed everything and then after that I used the Universal Clean and Prep diluted 1 to 7 as the clay bar lubricant and uh, Got all the contaminants off removed all the ferrous metal particles that might have been sticking in the paint um, And basically just decon the whole thing after that, um, I went ahead and did the engine bay detail, which you guys saw. I, I also mentioned I wasn't going to uh, open it back up, but I didn't. This actually was a freebie I did for the owner because it just needed to be done. I mean, that's the bottom line. He's trying to sell the car. I wanted every aspect of this thing to look as best as it could so that he can get the best return on his investment. He's investing in me. I'm investing in him. So that's a good trade. So everything looks amazing under there. I did the underside of the hood as well. Um, and so that's it with that. As you guys saw, I showed you all the leaves and crap that was in the cowl and all of that. Uh, got the wheels and barrels looking great. The tires were dressed with the universal dressing, diluted 50-50 with water. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but the windows had a bunch of white overspray all over them. So I got most of that out as well. I, I did not catch that on video. I just noticed it literally when I pulled it outside. Um, I don't know what it was, but I ended up claying the windows again. Yeah. So um, you also noticed that I pulled the plate and that black mounting bracket that BMW and Mercedes use for their plates because the plate is something he's going to take with him when he sells the car. So it's obvious that underneath there is going to be dirty. So you want to clean that so the potential customer also knows that it's been cleaned and very well taken care of. Um, I hand polished the chrome tips there. They look awesome with the new 2021 metal polish. Um, I polished the entire car with the Universal All-in-One, the orange buff and shine uh, pad and the Harbor Freight dual action polisher. In here, I moved the mat, I vacuumed all underneath there and lifted it up and vacuumed inside where the jack is, all that. I got all the dog hair out of there. Um, a lot of guys will polish that rear bumper lip with the hatch shut and you can't get all the way back there. So I did it with it open. Sorry guys that, want, that are watching the video, I'm talking to the owner at the same time. Basically giving you guys the, uh, the recap of what happened and he's listening so that I don't have to say it again. <laughs> so on the interior, I wiped everything, well, I cleaned everything with Universal Clean and Prep. I spot treated the carpet with a damp shampoo method. Um, I got all the dog hair out of the interior. The console wasn't 
incredibly bad it just had some dirt and random stuff i wiped the mirrors uh, another cool thing i did was i uh, hit the vanity vanity mirrors dash is all nice all the nooks and crannies look good i i got the mats out of there clean the plastic mats clean the door panels then i wiped everything down with infinite use detail juice one uh to add some uv protection and to to leave a very natural look nothing snotty or any of that nastiness so as far as the back goes same thing went in here i cleaned out all the vents the headliner looked great already so i didn't do a whole lot with that um what else oh I did mention, and I, I shot a segment of the video. Notice those aren't yellow anymore? They're good. Nice and clean, yeah. So, those look good. Um, I also went ahead and treated uh, your windshield wiper arms because they were, like, really gray looking. Uh, the other thing I, I always do, which some people don't, is I cleaned inside there. That's okay. pretty important. And there was a pretty nasty scratch there. You can still see it. I did a little bit extra work, uh, but I, I the the problem is the paint is thinner on that because they're painted off the car. Um, so when the robots paint them, it's it's a lot of times it's the frame. Sometimes the doors. Different manufacturers do it do it different ways, but um, looks good to me. And I mentioned to you earlier, um, the only thing I would do to this car, even if you were going to keep it or sell it. The only problem with doing those brake calipers is how are you going to know what the next guy is going to love? You know what I mean? That's the biggest problem um, is is deciding on a color that you aren't going to get to enjoy. That's the thing. That's true. All right, guys. This has been Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me babble and watch these videos. Um, it truly... It makes me feel awesome that I have so many people that watch the videos and that subscribe to the channel. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them below. Um, and uh, again, I appreciate you guys. Check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I've got going on. And again, if you need me, if I can help you in your detailing endeavors, 813-846-4406. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day.